we traveled through museums, we explored how color contributes to culture. Well, even more specifically, how different cultures use color to reflect their history. Whether it is by the high use of the color red used in the neoclassical period or the pastel colors representing playfulness in the Rococo period, we are able to see how different cultures want to reflect their culture's history, realistically or idealistically. And as we were able to visit several museums, we found a significance of colors throughout several paintings and different time periods. And we specifically found this through indigenous Native American artwork. As we stand in the Met, we are able to see various Lenape bags, known as bandolier bags. And bandolier bags are based on bags carried by European soldiers armed with rifles, who use the bags to store ammunition cartridges. So as the Lenape tribes were forced out of their homelands, they would carry these bags along with them on their journey. The tradition put into this bag was carried down from older de generations of Delaware tribes, as well as those of other Native peoples, after they were forcibly relocated. Due to events and laws like the Indian Removal Act of 1830, the Lenape were forcibly removed from these ancestral lands and relocated to areas of Oklahoma, Wisconsin, and Canada. Despite these traumatic relocations, tribes like the Lenape continued to create objects as they had in the ancestral lands. The bright colors associated with this bag bring forth a positive rather than dark outlook on the Delaware relocation. And there is meaning to these contrasting bright colors. Yes, it is possible that the contrasting colors represent the celestial sky and the underworld realms. Abstracted designs on the sash may also be read in relation to the cosmos because they branch into four directions, which might relate to the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west, which help in relocation and the division of the earthly realm into four quadrants. Floral forms combined with the use of ribbon and colorful glass beads not only attest to the transformation in artistic production, but also testifies to the cre creativity of the people as they adapted to new situations. And imagine having this bag with you on your relocation journey. The bright colors would attract attention, and the sparkle of the beads would reflect sunlight as the ribbons fluttered in the wind or moved as one walked. We can take from this that the Native Americans use bright colors to represent their strength and positivity through hardship. We are in the Brooklyn Museum in the Art of the Americas exhibit where we were struck by a piece of the painted elk hide. The piece exhibits the Sundance, which was a Native American dance which was intended to honor the creator deity for the Earth's bounty and to ensure this bounty continued. It was a sacred ceremony that the that tourists and anthropologists often witness. However, the U.S. government outlawed the Sundance until 1935 in an effort to compel Native, America, Native Americans to abandon their traditional ways. The artist Consago likely included references to the Sundance because he knew tourist consumers would find the scene attractive, but he modified the scene, combining it with the acceptable wolf dance, perhaps to avoid potential ramifications. What is amazing is that even after the dance was prohibited, it's still represented in a bright way in neon color. And this is possibly so that for future generations of Native Americans, they would be able to take a positive outlook of the Indian Removal Act. This positive outlook also shows the strength of the past generations. And not only to see the positive outlook of the Indian Removal, removal Act, but also to see how even after their customs had been prohibited, they still practiced and worshipped who they were. Now we see the black on black ceramic vessel. This piece, pioneered by Marianne Julian Martinez, shows a style of applying matte black design over polished black. The areas that are burnished have a shiny black surface, and the areas painted with guaco were matte designs based on natural phenomena, such as rain clouds, feathers, rows of planted corn, and the flow of rivers. A bird in flight over rain clouds. The prayer for rain. And the item, shape, color, and designs all relate to the contemporary Art Deco movement, which was popular between the two world wars and emphasized bold geometric forms and colors. The vessel continued its culture identity by using traditional forms and practices in response to the changing historical situation. With the introduction of the railroad, the economy of New Mexico changes. Native American people start making things to sell to foreigners. Pottery becomes the single biggest source of income. Before the arrival of the railroad to the area in the 1880s, pots were used in the pueblos for food, storage, cooking, and ceremonies. But within inexpensive pots appearing along the rail line, these practices were in decline. By the 1910s, 
Miss, Miss Martinez found a way to continue the art by her, by selling her pots to a non-native audience, where they were purchased as something beautiful to look at rather as utilitarian objects. With its dramatic shape and the high polish of the surface, the pot exemplifies Maria Martinez's skill in transforming a utilitarian object into fine art. The work of Maria Martinez marks an important point in the long history of Pueblo pottery. Ceramics from the Southwest trace as a connection from ancestral Pueblo to the modern Pueblo eras. Given the absence of written records, tracing the changes in shapes, materials, and designs on this long-lasting shreds found across the area allows scholars to see connections and innovations. Maria Martinez brought the distinctive Pueblo style into a wider context, allowing Native and non-Native audience to appreciate the art form. With the application of matte black designs, this unique color exemplified the fine art Marina Martinez was able to express to both Native Americans and non-Native Americans. Earth's creation is the piece we are seeing now, made in 1994 with patches of bold yellows, greens, reds, and blues that seem to bloom like lush vegetation over the large canvas. It is monumental in its scale and impact. The artist Emily Conway Canargue of Australian descent composed the piece that w were abstract and featured the motif of repeated dots acting sometimes as a linear stroke or elsewhere used to fill large patches of space. Aboriginal culture has long been intimately connected to the landscape of Australia. Inhabited by humans for over 40,000 years, the region is characterized by deserts, grasslands, and dramatic arc rock formation. Kanargoi was an established elder of her community and was trained to create ceremonial sand paintings inspired by her ritual dreamings, as well as to paint decorative motifs on women's bodies as part of a ceremony called a wiley. These visual forms were connected to cultural expressions in song, storytelling, and dance. While her paintings have never been figure figural, they remain influenced by culture in which she grew up as well as the natural environment. Still connected to natural environment, however, these works reference changing atmospheric character of the seasonal cycle. Earth's creation documents the lushness of the green time and that, that follows periods of heavy rain and makes use of tropical blues, yellows, and greens. This bright color exemplifies Native American connection to their environment and rituals. Trade, made in response to the 500th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's arrival in North America in 1992. The artist Juan Quictesi Smith from the Confederated Salish and Quatuni tribes of the Flathead Indian Nation created a large mixed-media canvas called Trade. Smith illustrates historical and contemporary inequities between Native Americans and the United States. The layering of images, paint, and objects on the surface of the canvas portray the layers of history and complexity. It is a collage. With newspaper clippings about the Native life. A lot of these items, including the photos, comics, tobacco, and gum wrappers, ads, feature stereotyp stereotypical images of Native Americans. Combined with these clippings is paint, blocks of white, yellow, green, and red paint. The color red had significant meanings for Smith, meaning it was referring to Native American heritage as well as to blood, warfare, anger, and sacrifice. Prominent brush strokes and the dripping blocks of paint cite to the abstract expressionist movement from the 1940s and 50s with raw brush strokes describing deep emotions and social chaos. And then don't forget about the canoe we see on the top layer. Yes, this is a life-size canoe which was used by both Native Americans and non-Native explorers and traders to travel along the waterways of North America. Possibly suggesting trade and cultural connections. Also seen is the clothesline above the canvas with a variety of Native-themed toys and souvenirs. Cheap goods are shown in exchange for the lands that were lost, reversing the historical scale of land for trinkets. Some serve as reminders of how Native life has been commodified, turning Native culture objects into cheap items sold without a, un, without un, a true understanding of what the original meanings were. Trade restates the history of the United States and desire to expand beyond the sea to shining sea. The belief in the destiny of Western expansion. We were able to see how Native Americans did not idealize their paintings but made them from using realism. And every single color used in these pieces had some sort of po some sort of a positive meaning. 
reflecting positively off their hardships. In several other museums, we were able to see how other art historical time periods used color to represent their history. We are now in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, staring at the piece, The Slave Ship, painted by Turner. This painting is showing people throwing overboard slaves who are sick with disease because a storm was coming. Immediately looking at the painting, it is beautifully lit with bright colors. It is a typical Turner sunset with bright reds, blues, and oranges. Because we are so lost in the bright sensuality of the piece, our eye takes a second before we are drawn into the horrific sight at the bottom of the piece, where we basically see people broken apart throughout the ocean. This was during the time known as the Enlightenment, where ideas were renewing in the scientific and mathematical fields, but rev the revolution was also dawning. Turner had the challenge of trying to use both lightness and darkness to show both sides of the time period. Turner is able to combine the differences in the time period by using this technique. Now we are standing in the Louvre in Paris, and we are standing next to the piece Liberty Leading the People. The painting shows the revolution of 1830, showing the allegorical personification of liberty thrusting forth the Republic's tricolor banner as she urges the mass to fight on. Liberty holding the French tricolor flag representing equality, fraternity, and liberty. The values of the revolution. Historically, it is important to know what is happening. A monarchy had just been restored in France. That was very politically oppressive. Yes, and the revolution was against the restoration and brought in a king that would be more friendly to the needs of the middle class. The violence is frightening. However, the red, and white, and blue echo throughout the piece. Staring, at, staring from Liberty who carries a lot of importance, Delacroix gives her a kind of realism. She is lit with her arm forward with the flag. Also in the Louvre, we found the Niobe crater. Yes, and this is a piece of Greek pottery which was used to mix wine and water. The scene on the vase is about a woman named Niobe, who bragged about her children being more numerous than, and beautiful than those of the goddess Leto, Apollo, and Artemis. And Apollo and Artemis wanted revenge and murdered all 14 of Niobe's children. The color is significant because this is red figure painting. Meaning that the bodies are carved out of the red clay of the pot and silhouetted by a black background. This technique in bringing out the red allows the figures to be shown in detail, and the red also shows the significance of wealth. And as the Greeks became more obsessed with the human body, the red clay effect added descriptive detail to the body. We are now in the Crowley Chapel. Yes, and we are looking at the Entombment of Christ, painted by Pontarmo in 1525 during the Reformation of Europe. And this piece is painted in the manner of style during the Reformation period. The painting is showing the Entombment of Christ as Mary holds him. What is interesting is that there are no signs of entombment. There are only figures. Pontarmo has made the piece almost a non-earthly setting. All the figures are dramatically clothed in pastel colors. And drama and light colors are both characteristics of mannerism. But they are not characteristics of the time period. During the Protestant Reformation, artists used a ton of iconoclasm, the destruction of any religious symbols, and art as icons. It is easy to say this is an icon, as it is showing the entombment of Christ. However, Pontormo almost made the figures unnatural and artificial. Artificiality takes away from any type of iconoclasm. And in terms of the color affecting history, with these pastel colors, there is almost a fakeness added to the piece, rejecting the ideas of the Renaissance and, in, and supporting the unbalanced oddness of the manner of style. We are now in the Brooklyn Museum in New York, looking at the elephant mask of the Kawasi Society. We see this is extremely intricately decorated beaded mask. The mask danced by the members of the Elephant Society in the region of Cameroon. The mask had the role of honoring the king and bringing about social harmony in a way of celebration and dance. The society would wear these with a red feathered headdress, a leopard skin pelt, and a full body costume. Symbolizing the king's power, the divine rule, and the essence of the powerful animal. People would wear these if they thought of themselves as one with great power. The shapes made in the mask relate to the patterning on the body of the leopard. All the colors and shapes come together to suggest the power of that king. The Native American artwork exemplifies their outlook on their traumatic relocation through a use of both bright and bold colors, while other time periods worked with color differently. Yes, for instance, during the Enlightenment, artists used darks and lights to balance the hardships of the revolution with the ideals of the Enlightenment. 
while Greek artists used intricate technique and various colors to center in on humanism. And during the Mannerist period, rejecting icons, artists used their imagination in light pastels, pastel colors to create an unearthly setting.